Howdy, partner. And welcome to another Down the Rabbit Hole video. I'm wearing my cowboy hat and on purpose because a year or two ago, a couple years ago actually, Swifto did a video about a variety of questions, random questions, as he usually does. And he talked about old items of clothing that he wished would come back. And he thought, I want to start wearing hats again. I'm not sure if that ended up going well or not, Swifto, but uh, in my video response, I mentioned, well, hats have their bonuses and minuses in the modern era, so good luck to you, Swifto. What would my article of clothing be? Well, as you can tell from the thumbnail, that's what this video is all about. I got myself a cloak. I remember talking in my video response saying, you know, I really wish cloaks were a thing again because as a D&D player, I just love the idea behind them. But they just have, they are impractical and they don't really have any good use. It just doesn't work. What I would maybe use one for, and the one that I have bought today for, is it's getting a little cold and walking around the house sometimes I feel too cold in my normal clothes but not cold enough to put on like a bathrobe or something and I thought I know I need something some kind of a covering like a cloak however I got this poncho and this was actually bought in Tombstone Arizona when we went down there we thought we'll go to the Wild West that's where that hat came from too we saw these and we're like, oh yeah, yeah, there you go. That's gonna solve your colder nights problem. You've got your, your nice comfy blanket with a hole in it. And it's basically a glorified cloak, so problem solved. But this thing is not the most comfortable to wear. It is essentially a rug. Like it's hard, coarse, not pleasant against the skin feeling stuff. And I just thought, yeah, no, I don't, this isn't really going to work. And, I mean, we've had it for years, and you can see it's still holding its shape from when it first unpacked it. Like, it's it's very, um, it, it's, it's harsh. It's not pleasant to wear. Maybe if you're out in the desert and you want to protect yourself from some of the, the cold wind that might blow around, sure, this would be fine. But this doesn't really cut it for me as a covering for around the house. A cloak would be nice, and I was kind of thinking to myself, I started researching them because I thought, well, maybe at the next expo event I go to, or some retro thing, or a medieval fair, if there are any of those ever again, maybe I'll get myself a cloak, because I kind of, after that, after saying it, just I was like, God, I really, I, the seed was planted, I want a cloak, but they're so impractical. And then, I hit upon this very awesome video from Living Anachronism. Cloaks for Everyday Adventurers. This was actually recommended because uh, Shadowversity, who I've mentioned many times, gave him a shout out and said, if you want to see a good cloak video, check this one out. And I did. And Kramer, the guy who runs the channel, he did some amazing deep dives into cloaks, the different types that exist, and the various problems they have. What I think of as the standard cloak, uh, it's called a mantle cloak, according to his video, and it has problems. That thing around your neck is very easily, if, it's, if something gets caught in a drawer, you're getting yanked back and it's not practical. If you move more than a pace, uh, a, a walking pace ahead, the hood from the cloak blows off your head. It's, it's just not practical. I was like, yeah, I'm with you, man. They are not useful bits of clothing in this modern age. Until he actually mentioned this cloak, which I am now going to unbox. Uh, let me just get into my appropriate attire. Yes, I'm in my chain mail, because we're going to put on this cloak. Now, what is this? I would recommend you check out Living Anachronism's video. He really goes into all different types of cloaks. He talks about the Rwanda cloak, which is Irish in origin, and it has a lot of benefits. It's actually useful and not to spoil it but like he he mentions there's a pretty good iconic reason why Rwanda cloaks are the way to go and he had also had a follow-up bunch of people asking him so where do you get this Rwanda cloak and he did post a link he said I don't make any money off this but here's where I got mine from I followed that link it went to Nordstrom and it wasn't in stock anymore and he did another video recently saying actually that one's out of stock it's no longer for sale 
but I'll measure mine and tell you what it's made of. You can make your own. They're not hard to make. I did a Google image search for that particular Moana cloak, which was made by a company called Top Men, which is a British men's clothing, fancy kind of clothing uh, chain. Um, they're still in business. Well, they, they've changed to a new company. But Top Men made men's Rwanda cloaks. And I did a search online. I'm like, well, okay, now that I've got the brand and the name and what to look for, I think it was called Over the Shoulder Cape. I managed to locate a couple on Poshmark. Now, I'm in Canada. I found the first one on Poshmark.com. And it was exactly what it looked like from Kramer's video. And it was not too badly in the price tag. I was going to pull the trigger and I thought, wait a minute, I've had bad luck sometimes buying stuff and then somebody's like, oh, you're in Canada? We don't ship there. So I was like, uh, oh darn, okay, I'll do a search on poshmark.ca. Lo and behold, you can search by brand, there's Top Man. They had this cloak for even cheaper than the one that was on the poshmark.com one. So I'm like, great, I'm gonna get it. It's like 18 bucks for this thing, cool. So I'm gonna unbox it, try it out. I'm gonna do a follow-up video, what's it like wearing a cloak and measure it out and stuff for your benefit. But let's open it up and find out. Now, the one thing I'm a little bit uncertain about, all of the Poshmark, or sorry, all of the Rwanda cloaks from Top Men that I looked up were all one size fits all men's. This was listed on poshmark.ca as women's US medium. So this might be too small. I hope not, but you know what? If, it's, if so, I'm out 18 bucks. So let's cut her open. And see what we got. I got my D&D uh, &D slash uh, Wild West dagger here. Yeah, well, uh, when I saw the, the price for the Poshmark.com uh, Rwanda cloak, I was a little bit like, oh, I don't know, man. That's, that's not really... I don't know if I want to quite spend that much, but 18 bucks and like 5 bucks in shipping. I think it comes from Quebec. Uh, I had the address there. Um, yeah, it, it looked like it was going to be... Like, it's $23 for this thing, so... Let's see, Ooh, there it is, that's the right material, all right, no uh, receipt or instructions or anything, but it's a cloak. Now, Kramer mentions, oh, this is a pretty decent size, I'll, uh, I'll show you some video in a second, let me try it on first. Um, Kramer mentions basically the benefit of this thing, it's a big, long blanket, basically, with a slit up the middle. There's the uh, there's the label. Make that up. It actually says top man. And huh, I'm not putting it on just yet, but it, it definitely goes down to my thighs. Yes, here's the thing. It's basically a big square that way with big long straight arms on it. And the way he shows it is you essentially just put it on like that. That's a cloak, believe it or not. No, doesn't have the hood. No, doesn't have the mantle across it. But what it does have are huge benefits over regular cloaks, the, the mantle type, and others. There's other ones you can mention. So, yeah, actually, that's a good length. That is very good. Okay, so um, here's, here's what it looks like on me fully. And I'm actually pretty impressed. It's a nice material. It's a soft, sort of stretchy material here. Ooh, does it say a size? Does it say a size? No, it's just as top man. No size listed anywhere. So one size does fit all. Ooh, and I can already tell it is quite warm. It's gonna, it's gonna work. Now in its current configuration, it's basically a shawl. Like this looks like something that granny would wear. And that's maybe why it was considered to be a, a ladies garment. But what Kramer points out is you can wear the Rwanda design benefits over a mantle cloak is you can throw the arms over your shoulders and you've got the standard cloak looking thing. Like this is the sort of thing you'd see adventures walking around with. And because it's all just one piece, now he does a lot of reenactment stuff where he's doing combat and acrobatics and that kind of stuff. He mentions if somebody, if you're in a battle, if you've got your your dagger out and you're fighting, you know, a bunch of orcs or whatever. Uh, if somebody was to grab you from behind in a mantle cloak, you'd get strangled. Like, 
But with this one, the great benefit is it's one piece of clothing. So basically, yeah, you might get a little initial resistance, but eventually the thing would just fall right off you and you can continue your combat. Ooh, you know what? Let's, uh, let's do this properly, shall we? Yeah. Um, so, and the other thing is it has multiple configurations, which is really also very cool. So we've had the um, shawl shape just over the shoulders. Another one is, I'm trying to remember, he had this one thrown over here and this one either tucked into a belt and that gives you that kind of more uh, standard, you know, almost look like a Roman senator, don't I? Something like that. Uh, you've got this configuration, you can also throw this over your shoulder and you've got full movement of your arms and yet you're still held in place. It feels very natural, very good. My only complaint is as a cloak, it doesn't go down very far, like it's basically not far off my rear end. However, I think that might actually be to its benefit. Um, I'm going to do a couple, a week or two of wearing this thing and just see what are the good and bad points about wearing a cloak around the house. Do I get it caught indoors? Do, I won't be stepping on it, so that's a good thing. Um, yeah, this is my cloak, and I'm I'm feeling pretty good in it. My Rwana, 18 bucks. Like, I'm not going to argue that. I'm really feeling the warmth now. So, and it's nice and soft. This is the kind of thing I think I could wear around the house and not feel too uh, self-conscious about it as far as, like, heat is concerned. It's, it's very... It's a, got a lot of different configurations. Yeah, I think I'm going to like this. Oh, another one that he did is you can actually crisscross, tie it behind you. I won't, I won't try and tie it right now, but maybe I can. Yeah, if I do that. This is my first time doing this, so I'll probably get better at this kind of stuff later. But uh, he does, one of the cloaks that Kramer does a comparison of is the um, Game of Thrones cloak. And this is that configuration. Oh, I think I've caught myself. Anyway, so yeah, there's there's another cloak uh, variety that I could do. And I could walk around and yell at the peasants in the top of the uh, battlements. And yeah, I'm, I'm liking the cloak. Right, now, I'm. that's my first impressions. That's my unboxing. I will come back once I've had it on for a while and tell you the pluses and minuses. So here is the Rwanda laid out flat. As Kramer says in his video, it is basically just a sheet uh, with a slit cut in it. You can see the whole thing there. I'm going to give you some measurements in a second. There is a, a seam down the middle here. I don't know if that means it's two separate pieces. I guess, you know what? I think it is because that goes all the way through to the underside. You can make that out. So yeah, it's it's actually two pieces cut together and I'll get to that intersection in a minute. However, um, what is this stuff? Well, it's like a wool blend on one side and then a darker, you know, a black on this side. They are two separate pieces. Like you could pick that up and it makes like a bubble, if that makes any sense. Kramer showed it better in his video. Um, the stitching, I don't know, I'm going to make that out. Oh, that's a little hair. Uh, the stitching is very good, but you know what? You could quite easily do that at home, I'm sure. Uh, what else? Okay, yeah, the intersection. Now, this, given that these are, I guess, maybe technically two pieces, if you were to make this yourself, now there's the label right there. Top man. Um, if you were to make this yourself, I'd highly recommend give this join a lot of reinforcement because this is the back of your neck this is going to get a lot of duress this is going to get pulled and pushed and all kinds of things are going to happen and it's going to happen right there so that's probably the only really um tricky bit and while we're at it i might as well uh, give you some dimensions there's the tape measure on that corner so this direction it is 45 maybe 46 inches that way and going from top or front across all the way past the neck to the back uh 64 ish 
he has a little bit of ripple in there 64 maybe 65 um, the hem or sorry the split happens at the 35 inch mark so you can see there we're parallel to the top and yeah 35 inches is where you want that um, intersection to occur if you will and from the intersection I'll just give you one of these widths it is a little bit of wiggle room let's say it's 22 degrees of uh, 22 inches across and pretty much straight the entire way like it's a it's a big flat piece it is definitely there's no kind of you know um, going out in a an edge or anything it's it's one giant square basically so yes that is how you would uh, replicate exactly what is here but you know what there's lots of different Rwana patterns out there so try for yourself well I have to say I'm very very happy with my Rwana cloak I think it has all the right feels and it works well it is cloak-ish it keeps me warm this thing is awesome now i've actually been trying it out for a few weeks just to see you know what does it feel like what's it like in day-to-day -day use obviously not in my tab art all the time but i thought i'd give you the proper dungeons and dragons effect here i am out in the wilderness about to fight the dragon in my cloak um i really like it it does keep me very warm this material is like a sweater or like i described earlier it's like a shawl for dudes at least that's what i keep telling myself um and there's actually there's a, i want to do a little breakdown here but basically so what is what do you think now that you've seen it uh i mean it's got a nice stretchiness it's got a nice feel to it it really keeps me warm i really like how this thing i've actually worn this on some cold days in fact we're getting into winter time um i actually as it was getting a bit chillier i thought i'm gonna wear a normal shirt in fact one day i tried a t-shirt and just this on top of it and i was nice and warm i really like how this thing works as a garment to keep me from getting too cold i mean it's it's not as good as maybe a sweater but when we're in the depths of winter i'll think about doing that kind of stuff right now this thing looks feels great it keeps me good and warm I like how my arms are kept outside like this is very usable I can do things in front of me I can work on the computer I can do all kinds of stuff and this never gets in my way which Kramer did mention that is the biggest problem of the traditional mantle cloak is it's closing on you like a curtain and you got to keep pushing your arms out you got to keep doing stuff and then you got to flip it back it's it's just not practical that's why I'd always thought no the cloak is just never gonna work why would you ever think about it that's not the case now in addition to the fact that my arms are kept out here what i also like about this thing is i can actually adjust on the fly as things change i can do more of a there's a name for it and i've forgotten it already but there's a there is a, there's a design for boyan broken broken a broken cloak maybe broken i'll put the name here uh, yes, I can do various designs and shades and changes depending on the situation. Among which, sometimes, now this is probably just a very specific thing for computer users, but sometimes when you're sitting there working away, your arm for your mouse is like always really, really being busy. And I find if I just put one of the arms of the Rwana over my actual arm, it keeps me good and warm. Like it's a really noticeable change. I'm feeling that this thing is like, so uh, uh, adjustable and it feels really nice on the arm and it's a good way to keep me kind of temperature regulated if you will um, there are some drawbacks to it though like it's not all perfect for example um, going around in kind of traditional or this style whatever this one is this is sort of how I normally have the thing on and it feels great and it works great but if I'm eating something like a cookie or something like that um, it does you know you get crumbs cut in here it's a little bit like a bib so you have to kind of shake them out and reduce and all that kind of stuff that isn't all that fantastic um, it's also uh, got problems of like it's short it, it is not the cloak in the Dungeons and Dragons traditional sense I mean it is 
a cloak of the traditional sense. And I'm going to get to that. But um, it, it just feels a little short at the back. Like, I, I want to be, I don't know, I want to be Darth Vader. I want to be Batman. And I can't really do that in this thing. However, that's also a good thing about it. Because you're not going to get this thing caught in a door as you walk past, or on furniture, or in a drawer. Like, it's, it's a, because it's only down to like my hips or maybe my knees, it doesn't run into any of the problems that a real mantle cloak down to the floor is going to run into. I mean, Lord knows the number of times I'm sure Batman or Darth Vader have ever got themselves caught on something. That's not going to happen with this. Another great thing is that I actually tried this for real. If I get into a car, this thing doesn't get caught on the door. Or when I attach the seatbelt, it doesn't do that either. It's really a good design, like a very, very large poncho or sweater. Like, it, it works. It's n There's no problem with that in that regard. And also, you don't get any dirt on it. That must be something else for proper real length cloaks. If you're walking along, like, it's fine and dandy if you're upright and doing your thing and trudging through the marshes or whatever. Well, maybe not. But that any time you're like slightly bent down or reaching for something, you're going to get dirt and you're going to get mud and stuff like that caught on your cloak. That doesn't happen with this because of the short length. And I discovered a kind of an interesting little benefit of this design is if I do need to reach down, like tie my shoes or drop something on the floor, I can actually just sort of tuck it under my chin, do whatever I need to do, you know, do the, the, the thing down on the floor, stand up and take my chin off, and it still maintained the swept over the shoulders thing. I'm not going to do a brooch. I know um, Kramer with uh, Living Anachronism, he said, oh, the great thing is you can, if you want to secure it in place, you can put a brooch on it, and that'll keep it from, from swooshing around. I'm like, I'm not a brooch guy. I don't think very many guys are, but um, you can do that kind of stuff. I also like, he did mention, you can tuck it into a belt, and that does give it a, a very neat alternative look. He actually mentioned you can put things in here. I mean, I can't imagine too many situations where I would, but the option exists. What I will say about the Ruana, it has the look. It really has the look, if not the length. So we've already described how it, it is a little short. It, it doesn't fit. But if I'm walking down the hall, especially at a certain clip, I do notice this thing billowing up behind me like a proper cloak. And I Sometimes we'll see myself in a mirror or a reflection. I'm like, hey, there's that guy in the cloak over there. It, it has the look. Like, it gives that cloak vibe. I feel like some kind of medieval adventurer or a Roman senator, like I said before. It's got that sort of vibe going for it, and I really, really like that. It's just not all the way down to the floor, but I think that's to its benefit. I think it's actually a good thing that you don't have this. And what I will say as a final uh, sort of indication of just how good the Rwanda cloak is, um, you can see here, I've done a few of the sort of swish uh, uh, examples. This was me essentially just making my thumbnail for this video. And if I catch it exactly the right way, yes, it does have that swirly floating cloak wrapped up kind of an appearance. And that's, that's what I like. It was like, hey, I managed to get the look. So, like I say, it may not be down to, like, the floor or your ankle length like you would think a traditional cloak is, but I got it in a way that is like, okay, yes, you can get the cloak to do its thing. And also, oh, I might as well stay right here, somebody else that wears a Rwanda cloak that I only noticed recently. The new Dune movie is out, and those characters are in, you know, still suits and various garb and... Some of them are wrapped up in like veils and things like that, echoing that, you know, desert adventurer thing. But there's a really good sequence. And when I saw in the theater, I was like, oh my God, that's a Rwanda cloak. Duncan Idaho. He wanders around most of the show with something swept over him. And it looks like a standard mantle cloak. And you know, he's in there and he's making decisions and he's commanding stuff or whatever. But... I only noticed it's actually a Ruana that he's wearing. In the scene, uh, there's a fight scene. I won't spoil anything if you haven't seen the film, but there is a fight scene where he's pulling off his gloves. Here's a screenshot. I was trying to find an actual bit of this, this fight because I wanted to show you exactly what was the thing, but I couldn't find the full footage, 
if you see the movie, watch him pull off his gloves, because the next thing he does is he takes his cloak and he throws it off. And I can tell because it's got these two pieces, it's a Rwanda. He's just like, all right, let's go. Ah, you know, that's what's so great about a Rwanda. So I'm very happy with this Top Man Ruana. I'm going to keep wearing it. Uh, it's good for the winter. It's going to keep me nice and warm. And it's also got that Dungeons and Dragons cloak kind of thing going on for it. And I feel like I've come full circle after doing my video response to Swifto and saying, you know, I wish cloaks would come back. They're just not practical. This one is. This one does for like 90% of what a cloak in my mind was sort of represented by, the, the mantle cloak, this thing's like 90% there, but it's also got a lot more utility. It doesn't have the flaws of a proper mantle cloak, and it feels great. It's It's got that kind of medieval vibe to it. I'm loving it. I think this thing is fantastic. So. Uh, I'm going to maybe just wrap it up there. I couldn't think of a, a way to round this out. I was going to say there's a link below to where the Rwanda cloak was that um, Kramer bought, but uh, the company that he got it from doesn't sell them anymore. And as I mentioned before, I got this from Poshmark. They occasionally carry unusual out-of-date brands. Not out-of-date, but like out-of-circulation brands like Top Man maybe you'll be able to find one as well. I did see one at the time that this one was available. There was one in the US Poshmark. Maybe you'll be able to find one if you want to just buy the one that Kramer has. I thought I had. If you want to make it yourself though, there's the dimensions. I mentioned them earlier. Uh, yeah, so I didn't even know a Rwanda cloak was a thing, but now that I have, and now that I own one, I'm loving it. I'm, in it. I'm a cloak wearer. It's great. All right, until next time. We'll see you down the rabbit hole.